Hey everyone, so my most commonly requested videos thus far have been more coding tutorials, and those are coming, but what's been the most challenging and irksome thing to me lately is figuring out how to use tools. I would much rather do interesting problem-solving things with code than figure out which button to press on this new software I don't know how to use, or know which tool is worth the wording curve, or going into a rabbit hole abyss of forums from 2008 of people asking a semi-relevant question to my problem. It's just crazy. So I'm going to give you guys a no BS quick version of how to quickly make a map and import it into Unity and be good to go, ready to script things and do design rather than figuring out the little semantical stupid stuff. Um, yeah, so this won't be a series or anything, so if you stick with me to the end of the video, you should be good to go, and I'll try to go as quickly and cleanly and safely as possible. All right. So there's a few things in the description. There's a few links and a text-based step-by-step of what's going to go down. So first, you're going to download and install a few things. We're all old enough to do this ourselves, so I will sit tight here while you do that. But you're going to need Unity 5. You're going to need Tiled, Tiled to Unity, and then at least one sprite sheet to work with. Now, I am personally recommending and curating Kenny.nl, also known as Asset Jesus. I'm going to be using his roguelike sprite sheet. Uh, you can use anything else, but I can't guarantee that all of our settings will be the same, so things might be a bit off. All right, did you do that? Okay, I'm going to assume you did, because we're going to keep going. So open up Tiled. This is what it should look like for a default new project. Just accept all the default options. We'll get to it. So first, we're going to import a tile set. So we're going to browse. Oh, look, it just happened to be there. It's like I prepared for this video. Um, so you're going to get a transparent or magenta sheet for the one that I am using. And all this is is that sometimes some image uh, recognizers don't recognize the transparency or don't have that like alpha channel if you ever see that option. So sometimes they'll use a color and this is what we'll use today because it takes an extra step. So we're just going to check this use transparent color. If you have a different color separating things, uh, you can click on this and you can enter in the hex or the HSV or the RGB code. And it's pretty simple to just use an eyedropper applet on like Chrome or something if you need to find these values. But we have it right here for us. Now, the next thing to note for this sheet specifically, and you should look this up for whatever sheet you have, is the tile width, height, its margin, and spacing. So the width and height for this sheet is actually 16 by 16. Usually in games you play, it's probably like 32 by 32. This is a pretty standard like mobile format size. So they are little, um, but this is what we're using for today. And so for this specific sheet, the margins are zero and the spacing is one. And you'll know if these are wrong because it will slice everything slightly off. So either look for an XML or a readme file and whatever you're using, or just, you know, do it and um, you'll know if you're wrong. So it looks like we are not wrong. So you see, we have all these cute little tiny things. Everything looks so much tinier in 16 by 16 bits, but that's not what we're here to focus on today. So the next thing that you want to do is if your map is not configured, you will probably get some awkward spacing. Um, so you want to make sure you go to map, map properties, and then see where it says tile width and tile height. Yours probably got set to default at 32, but we want 16 by 16 for this specific sheet. But if you have 32 by 32 sheet, then just obviously do that. So we're going to start by making a couple different layers. So this is what's useful. If you've used any kind of drawing tool, uh, you probably have used layers. So what we could do is let's say we have this really cool and pretty and mysterious lake. Uh, at least I think it is. So this will be our lake. We're going to rename this. Uh, I can't find rename fast enough. Okay, there we go. We're going to call this lake Hylia because that is obviously an accurate um, recreation of that. And then we're going to call this Hyrule. And so this will be Hyrule. Oops, maybe I should be a little bit more um, 
proper about this. Okay, here's Hyrule, very geographically accurate. Okay, so we have these two different layers. So why do layers matter? Well, there's a few things. First of all, you see this is going over the lake, but one thing we can do, just like layers in Photoshop and stuff like that, is we can move this layer down. So now the lake's on top. So let's say we wanted to fill this whole entire map with grass, we can do that, and we can have Lake Hylia sit on top of it. And so this is useful, you know, for making houses with roofs that go on top of things, among other things. Uh, so we're going to put these on different layers, and this will also be useful beyond just the aesthetics. It'll be useful for coding and doing colliders and stuff like that. So speaking of colliders, we can use Unity's box colliders and just export this as is. But a second thing you might want to look at is go to View, and then the Tile Collision Editor. And this will let us make our own collider. Uh, this imports to Unity as a Polygon 2D Collider. So a Polygon 2D Collider is going to be a little bit less efficient than a standard box collider because, you know, we could make the collider something crazy like this and it has to do a little bit more checks than just checking if it's in a cube. Um, I don't think we want this. I don't know what will happen if we make it like that. Uh, so we are going to delete that and just do something like this. Okay, great. So it's basically box shaped. And we are going to save this. And I'm going to call this um, Collision. Oh, look at that. It's almost as if I made another map called Collision Test Map. Um, so we're going to save that and we're going to overwrite it. Okay, there we go. Now you're going to open up Unity. So you can see I already have some stuff here to show you guys, but you're going to open up Unity. You can just have a totally blank project. I just made some stuff ahead of time because, um, you know, I'm prepared. All right, so now you're going to go to Tiled to Unity and you're going to click Help and then Import Unity Package to Project. And this is going to import a bunch of stuff into your project into your Assets folder. And you're going to get this Tiled to Unity folder that appears with all of these other folders. And that's what you need to set this up before you can start exporting. So once you do that, you can click File, Open Tiled File, and we're going to use what we just did, you're going to get all this that appears, and then this is literally the big ass export button. Make sure this is going to your project that you um, you want it to go to. We're going to click this, and one thing to be aware of, our vertex scale is 1. Depending on your scale of tiled coordinates to unity coordinates, this may need to be adjusted in case it's too gigantic or too tiny. So that's one um, number to be aware of if it's not giving you the results you're expecting. So it's importing our assets and we're going to let that go and then we're going to go to the prefabs so you can see we have our collision test map and it's very massive i should stop using the fill and see this is at scale one so we probably could have scaled back in the export we're going to make it a scale of 0.1 all right so now that your map is in unity you can see that when we click on it we can select everything and then when we drop down we have all of our layers are still maintained from the editor. So we have Hyrule, the big grass, and then we have Lake Hylia, which is independent. So we can still move it around in here in case it wasn't in the exact right spot in the editor. And you'll see we have the meshes and then the colliders that we defined in the editor. So we didn't do it for the water, but it would appear if we had done it in the editor. Uh, so let's say we rename this to Collision Grass or something like that. Now, when we have a player, maybe it has a script that says on collision enter, if there's a collider named collision grass, do some sort of thing, like make a Pokemon appear or something like that. Make a Pokemon appear every five steps. So we can make scripts that respond to these colliders that were imported directly from Tiled. Now, another advantage of using the Polygon Collision Editor is that you can see these walls were all one layer, right? They were all one layer, but we couldn't get this irregular shape because this is not a rectangle. It's two rectangles stuck together, 
but we'd have to make two separate rectangular colliders rather than applying it to all the same uh, material, so to speak. Uh, but it is more efficient, if that's something you're worried about, to just apply regular box colliders in general. So that's what we've done here, but we did have to manually apply this to the different sections. You can see here in the river we did that. But just to show you this in action, we have a player with a very basic script. It's a little blog and it runs into the wall and it can't move forwards. And finally, this is the code that I used for the player's movement. It's really, really simple, and there are other ways to go about it, but this will get you up and running if you're just trying to test things out and mess around. So really, that's all there is to it. Let me know if you have any questions, and most importantly, have a happy day wherever you are. I'll see you guys soon.